Are we back again on KRSM 98.9 every Monday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m.? We got Phil Augusta Jackson in the house, the creator of The Grand Crew. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, man. It, 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 how, does it, how does it feel? Like, like, like how, how does it really feel to, uh, to, to be on NBC? How did that come about, like, to get Grand Crew on NBC? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I, um, I used to work in advertising. So I'm I've been living in Los Angeles for about eight years now. Um, but in my 20s, I was living uh, in New York City and doing advertising. Um, but and, and, uh, during the nighttime, I would like do improv, take acting classes and do different stuff like that. Eventually got an agent and, you know, eight years after being in New York City, um, got hired on Key and Peele. And that's what that's what right. um, got me out to Los Angeles. And then from there, it was just keep grinding, keep working. Um, so I went from Key and Peele to a show called Survivors of Morse that was on the Stars Network. Went from Survivors of Morse to four seasons on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, and then I hopped over to um, Insecure for the last two seasons. And then while I was wow. at Insecure, sold um, sold the idea for Grand Crew. And now Grand Crew's on NBC. The, the, the feeling is is surreal. It still feels surreal. I'm really wow, that is, that is... That is crazy. That is crazy. Okay, so so how did how did writing for Institute? How did that help you out with the uh, Grand Crew? Well, every every writing job that I've had up to this point, I think, has contributed to um, the product that is Grand Crew. But Insecure specifically, you know, uh, when it comes to Issa um, and Prentice, um, who you know together they were the executive producers that were running the room, um, just humanizing the characters, making them relatable, making them funny having stories that come from a place of truth and just, you know, looking at Issa and, and, and um, really just seeing her trust her instincts and her gut when it comes to the right. stories that she wants to tell. I think that was very, very inspiring. It's like, okay, well, what do I find funny? What's the right. tone that I want to have in my own show? Um, right. And it just inspired me to just be a little bit more, you know, um, uh, willing to accept what I find interesting and then the right people will find the show, hopefully. Absolutely, absolutely. So, 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 where, where did the uh, when, where, and when did you get the idea to uh, start Grand Crew? Uh, so, because I, I even love the the actual title of the show. You know what I'm saying? So, where did the idea start start off from? Absolutely. So, when I was working at Brooklyn Nine Nine, um, so I sold this show with Dan Gore, who created Brooklyn Nine Nine. Um, so we we pitched it to NBC. So we've been working on the show and the pitch since 2017. So, you know, n n none of this stuff happens overnight. Um, and I right, have, exactly. You know what I mean? It, and it's like, yeah. I worked on Brooklyn, and then I got to work on the final two seasons of Insecure before I even had to start, <laughs> um, wow. you know, wow. the, the writer's room for, for, for Grand Crew. So we decided that we wanted to develop together. We had a really good dynamic. Um, we were tossing around a bunch of, like, crazy premises. I, like, literally, I looked at my phone at some of the ideas. It's like, uh, you know, Guy goes to the dentist and has a life changing experience. I don't even know what that means, but like that was <laughs> right. one of the ideas we had. We were just like throwing paint at the wall, <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? But before, uh, before every time we meet up, I would tell him that I had this wine bar that I go to, and I would tell him about you know the friends that I link up with, how right. we're how we're holding each other up, how we're holding each other accountable, how we're talking about our dating experiences. And at a certain point, we were both like, "Wait a second, I think, I think this is." This is the show, and that's kind of what right, unlocked yeah. everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let me ask a follow up question because sure. uh, because when I, when I think about the crew and uh, uh, and uh, also when I watched uh, the first episode, yeah, uh, the, the the word you, you just used the word the word that came to my mind was accountability and how we use our crew to hold us accountable for things and we hold others accountable for things as well. So that that seemed to like be like a, a a short message that i really got from watching uh, the first episode is that something that that was that a message you were trying to get through as well because oh uh, I, I think uh you know in other countries they might say friends or whatever but we got our crew you know what yeah I mean? right exactly yep <laughs> absolutely i think i think um accountability and just all the dimensions of friendship were the things that i wanted to explore with this show but i i think to your point when you have the right people around you, they will hold you accountable and they will call you out right. on your stuff, but you know that it comes from a place of love when you have the right, the right tribe and the right people around you. Now, Los Angeles can be like a pretty, a pretty lonely place. Um, right. So it, it makes it even more special when you do find those people um, that can keep it real with right. you, 
that can that can hold you up that can let you be your your, right. your true self let you be goofy you know let you be serious let you be hurt let you be happy and all those things and you know it's those types of dimensions that i feel like there's a real opportunity to just show more black people having those type of types of dimensions on television especially with network it just seems like a huge opportunity and oh, so man. That, was, that was definitely an inspiration when it came to how i wanted to um Write, write the show. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. Because you, you, you just dove into one of the questions. Okay. So, so how important is it for like the the mainstream t the the just everybody on TV to see uh, different types of black men and and, and like did, did your actual characters come off of people that you knew like like was it based mm -hmm. off loosely off of people that you knew or did you just just come up with them? Okay. Cool. So the first part, I think. I think it's important to, for us to see more black stories on TV, period. You right. know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, uh, being, a, being a black man, the perspective that I can bring is my, my point of view on what I find funny, what I find heartfelt, what I find interesting to kind of dis discuss with the show, that, uh, essentially a hangout show with a group of friends. Um, right. To, to um, the, what's the other part of that question? Because I, I had, hey, I had yeah, a fun yeah. on that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I, uh, uh, I was asking, did you come up with the characters oh, yes. based on people yes. you knew? Sorry. Or okay, yep. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so look, uh, th the short answer is yes, um, yeah. but it's not like it's not like Noah is my friend, such and such. It is, it's an amalgamation of conversations, dynamics, and experiences with with the wow. friends that, that I do have. And to be, to be real with you, like what I'm so proud of with this show is that um, of the six cast members, three of them are a part of the the that wine friend group in real life so i already knew wow i already knew echo he he's been my friend since right. i got to la i've known nicole buyer for longer than that she's one of my oldest friends period and i've okay. known Paul tart since i got to la for about eight years now and then when it came to bringing on justin aaron and gracie they just they just really fit in it felt like it felt like <laughs> we had all been right. kind of connected even though uh we weren't so so um right. it was definitely um a mix of friend experiences, but also my, my real friends are in front of the camera and also our writers on the show too. Wow. That is amazing. Wow. Is. So, um, so, so, um, what was the motivation behind telling the story of, of black men as a crew? And, and, and the reason why I asked that question is because, mm -hmm. uh, when we, we started our, uh, our radio show, yeah, we want to tell stories uh, about black people from a black perspective. I love that. Uh, because a, a lot of times in media we see black stories, but sometimes it doesn't seem authentic because it's told from somebody from another culture. Right. So, uh, uh, so what was the main motivation behind you being a black creator and telling a black story? So, I think um, the the main motivation was up until this point, um, when it comes to writing my own things. I've had the most success and the most enjoyment out of just writing things that I'm personally interested in, personally invested in, and at some level can relate to and have experience. And so, right. um, you know, it's it's that kind of cliche term, write what you know. But I, I think that, that right. was that was the motivation. I think the secondary benefit that I'm hoping for is that people are like, oh, like it's been a while since we've seen a show on network TV, uh, you know, with a group of black men and there's women involved and, and, and it just feels like everyone, everyone's getting along. It, it it's, it's, they're, they're allowed to be vulnerable. They're allowed to kind right. of interact and, 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 and be fully formed individuals. Um, right. So I, 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 but I think at a, at a ground level, it is, I like drink. I started drinking wine and I started hanging out with my friends. And that, <laughs> right. felt, that felt really fun. That felt really fun. To write about. And I was like, I really want people to, you know, we're in a pandemic. So like, I, I think right. there's room for a ton of like, a ton of uh, tonal types of shows. But in my head, I was like, friend group hangout show with wine. That is that is fun to watch. I want, right, I want, right. I want jokes in here and we're going to cover some things thematically, but um, at the end of the day, I, I, I want the show to like, in a way, to feel like a hug. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, no, exactly. Like, right, exactly. Right. Yo, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We can use it, I think, you know, and then, you know, at least as far as where I think this show can fit in, in people's consumption of, of, of what the piece is, you know, so wow yeah yeah so 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 what's your what's your favorite wine do you do you do the yeah. red 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 or yeah let's talk white about wine it. yeah so yeah. i like look i'm not i'm not picky at all and i i will be the first to admit i have a, a lot a lot a lot to learn about wine but 
<laughs> I, right right now i really i just got put onto petite syrahs so that's okay. it's just a, it's a type of red wine right um and i also like cabernet uh sauvignon so I, i'm a more like a red wine full body no not, doubt not too sweet <laughs> Right, right, right. So, so, I like rosé. I like bubbles. I like it. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 okay, okay. So, so like me, so like me. I started off with uh, 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 um, dang, Moscato. I okay. started off. Yeah, yeah. I started off with Moscato. Did you start off with with something sweet first, and then, or did you, or did you start the, with the bitter stuff right away? No, I mean to be real, I wasn't drinking much much wine when I was living in New York City. But right. the wine that I did have would be, you know, I was in my 20s, early 20s. So it was like, right. it was like you go to a house party and somebody had some like boxed wine. And, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So, so that's yeah. what I started. <laughs> and boxed wines get, um, yeah. But also, I'm not mad at boxed wines either. Like, right, you know, no if, doubt. If they're chilled, no right. doubt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then once I got to LA, I kind of, I kind of started to this wine bar They, you know, it's, it's like, um, they don't really have a set menu. You kind of tell them what you like. So that really right. quickly forces you to to identify the things that you you do and don't like in wines, and so that's that's good. Right. It, I got put onto it. Yeah. I, I absolutely, like it, it's 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 so amazing. I was talking to my brother, and I was just saying, like, it's so amazing, like finally seeing uh, black guys on TV. Like, like it's it's so crazy because you would think that we would have like a whole slew of these things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right now, yeah. but but it see, but it seemed like when I it's, it's like sometimes when I watch some shows, it's like not authentic or it's like or it or, or is is like they don't remind me of me and my crew. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And I yeah, love yeah. the way this was done. I, I love the And I love the way each character is different. So everybody can yeah. relate to somebody else, you know? Yeah, thanks, man. And, and you know, I, I agree. It's like I think especially in like the network landscape, there's definitely. Uh, been an opportunity for a long time to have a uh, a cast uh, that is the majority black men, um, but but I, again, I think in general there's just room for more black stories, <laughs> just period. Absolutely, yeah. right? and I think myself as a black man, I feel so 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 fortunate to have this opportunity to just share my sense of humor and and topics that I find interesting on a network platform, and I and I truly hope that I am not the that it's not a long time before the next one comes along and hopefully I'm a right. part of it. You know what I mean? I would love to keep producing <clears throat> shows. You know, I, I got um, goals in, in that capacity too, to make sure that there's more of us represented on screen too. Yo, it, it, you know, what's so crazy. Cause when I, when I first saw, when I first saw the trailer, I'm like watching TV. I forgot mm-hmm. what I was watching, but I first saw the trailer come through. I'm like, I'm like, you know, like yeah. time out. Is this five black? Okay, because I, I said, yo, I'm like, yo, is this yeah. five, is this black guys? Like, what in the world? I'm like, yo, I cannot wait. Oh my, nice, I love man, that. It, yeah, man, yeah. I, I was excited. But one of the things that I, one of the thing I took away from uh, uh, the first episode that was very genuine is, do you know how many times I've I've been in that situation where like you or somebody in your crew date? somebody from like the favorite place you like to yep. go and then now, <laughs> it goes wrong, and now you can't go there anymore yeah. like yeah. That's, a, that's a real that's a real situation that is a real situation. <laughs> Look, i mean they say by what you know so it, it would yeah. exactly happen like this but in our friend group we one of our friends he ended up making so like the, the spot is the spot you know you don't right you don't date at the spot right. because things go alive and everything falls apart but he would have, right. me, but also the bar's kind of dimly lit. Like it is a vibe. So I, <laughs> so what, about, you know what, I mean? <laughs> but what about friends? Like, you know, started to get back out there and, and we would show up at the bar and he would be on dates like consistently <laughs> at a certain point where like, dude, right. and, and it never, it never like, it never blew up like it did in the pilot, but like at a certain point right. we were like, Hey, don't act embarrassed when we come up and say hi to you. We are here all the time. <laughs> like, Right. 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 Don't don't be surprised when you see us at the place that we introduce you to. That's amazing. Oh, oh, okay, so so what do you want people to take away from from this season of the uh, the Grand Crew? So so we cover a lot of themes, um, but you know we don't hit you over the head with it. I think the thing that I would I would love for people to to take away from the show is that uh, that. It's okay to uh, to be vulnerable. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to to love. You know, right, right. I, really, right. what I want is for people to watch it and be like, "Man, 
that just seems like a really good, funny friend group. That that's yep. that's just the base level of what my my hope is. I hope you watch it and you find it funny and you find and you feel the love in the show. As far right. as like deeper takeaways, you know, look, it's you know, episode two is like about self care. You know, episode right. three yep. into like money dynamics in a, in a marriage. Episode four is about therapy. Episode five is about friendship and kind of like achieving your potential. Episode six is about. Uh, uh, black black men and their fathers. Episode seven is about headlines wow. and dealing with that news cycle. So we, we have themes, and I, I just hope that people um, um, feel m- my black experience, not the black experience, because there is no singular black experience. I just hope that absolutely. They, I just hope that they relate to m- my experience because you know it, it's it's definitely birthed from a very honest and truthful place um, as far right. as the inspiration for the show and the episodes that we wrote. So wow. That's Absolutely. So, so uh, what are some shows uh, that, that uh, influenced you uh, growing up, or, or even as an adult, some shows that you uh, sure. really like that influence your writing as well? Absolutely. Um, okay, so if we go, if we start in like the early '90s, let's let's go uh, and say, start with *In Living Color*. Um, mm. uh, a different world. Um, yep. Martin. Uh, mm. Seinfeld. Living right. single. <laughs> Um, I really love Sopranos. I really love Sex in the City. Um, right. And then, and then um, all of the shows that I've worked on as a writer. So that would be um, uh, Key and Peele, Survivor's Remorse, uh, Brooklyn right. Nine, Insecure. That's just off wow. the top. I mean, there's so many, but I, I love drama. <laughs> I, I, you know, Kirby Enthusiasm. Like, you know, I, I really, I got a lot of a lot of jams that I like, and um, I like jokes too. You know, uh, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 okay, uh uh what advice what advice do you have for any up and coming uh writers and creators? Like 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 what yeah. advice young black writers and creators who like what advice would you give to them? Um so I had a couple things. I think the, the first thing I would say is um it's never it's never too late to find to find your creative path. Um, I'm, I'm 37 and I feel like I'm just now kind of hitting my stride. I had a whole right. career. I spent all of my twenties working in advertising and didn't get my first professional writing job until I was 30. I think society right. sometimes <clears throat> makes you feel like you have to be 22 and like, absolutely for official. I didn't know what I was doing. I knew, I, I, I knew right. I was good at certain things, but it takes time and it's okay to figure, to take the time to figure it out. As long as you're working on something, which I think leads me to the second right. thing is always be writing always be writing, always be creating. Um, Absolutely. You know, I did a ton of short films, wrote a ton of pilots that no one will ever see, thankfully. (laughs) 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 Put in a lot of work. Um, And um, I think the biggest thing is, for writing specifically, is, you know, create it with people that you trust and just keep creating and know that Mm -hmm. that that will somehow, that will make you better at the craft, but also having something to show will pay dividends. And when you're writing specifically, judge the draft and not the process. It's very easy to start writing and be like, oh, this, this idea is terrible. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. This is bad. It's like, no, if, right. if something excited you about it at the beginning, finish the draft, be judgmental. Once you have a draft, don't be judgmental about the idea that you have, because if you do that, you can see Absolutely. about finishing anything. So right. judge the draft and not the process, I think was a thing that unlocked a lot of, um, a lot of, m- a lot more efficiency for me once I realized that. Right, right, right. I, I, I saw, I saw, I, I was looking at your Instagram and I yeah. saw on your Instagram that, so you, so you do, you like, you, you do music too. I do, so, you, yeah. so, so you do music mm-hmm. and you got your, 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 your song on what was the show 21? The, yeah, and I'll do the show. It, it, that's mm-hmm. crazy. 21. Thanks, man. Like, 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 how, how, how did that, how did that feel? Man, incredible. <laughs> it, 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 it <laughs> When I say that thing about just make it, make the thing, I think that's yep. just proof of that. Because the we were working on Grand Crew, production got shut down uh, the the day before our table read and the week before we were supposed to start filming the pilot. Now I've been doing music longer than I've been doing writing or acting or any of that stuff. And so right. when when all, when everything got shut down, I was like, you know what? I think it's time to make another EP. Um, and let me just make this because it's therapeutic and because music is just such a passion of mine finished the EP, made a couple music videos. And then I made this <laughs> music video for a song called Get It with my dude, uh, Nick Stanich and, and, and his crew. And <laughs> we just released it. 
people were like, yo, this song's pretty good. And then this dude from Sony reached out and was like, uh, we want to test your song to be in this video game. I wasn't sure if it was real, but it turned That's out That's crazy. Right, then, like, yeah. Six months or whatever later, they tested it. And then I actually thought that it didn't pan out. And then like a month before the game was about to release, he's like, yeah, it's in, you're in the game. And then, wow. Released and yeah, it was wild. That so. is crazy. So you be just getting hit with good luck. Just <laughs> getting hit. Like, yeah, or time, good. you know, it's like, time, well, what, what, well, lucky is where they say preparation is timing. You know what I mean? So it's absolutely. Like, absolutely. I, mean, I was 14, 12, 14. <laughs> right, so yeah. Like, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so crazy because me and my brother, we used to do so. So we had an independent record label, and oh, we used like, to just travel. Like we used to flip everything. You know what I mean? We used to yeah. have the. You know what I mean? The uh, 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 we travel all across the the world. But when we yeah. would send stuff in to uh, 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 John Matt, and we get nothing back. You know what yeah. I mean? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and if I could tell you the, the places that I sent my music when I was in New York, that. Got received with crickets. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I, got, I got way more. I got way more losses than I got wins. Right, yeah, oh, no doubt. I'm seeing no, the wins no. now. You know what I mean? But like, right, right. It takes a lot. A lot. You got to shoot some shots to 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 make some buckets. So definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, one thing I also noticed about the, about the show is that uh, mm -hmm. it got some pretty dope music in it as well. So how oh, cool. how, how how much is uh how much uh, goes into the uh the uh consideration for the music that you put into the shows? Great. Yeah, a, a, a ton. I, I love music so much. And I think tonally, it, it can do so much to just enhance what you watch on screen. Um, I uh, brought on my my producer for my own music to score the show. His name is Nick Lee. Um, he's, I think, like 23 or 24 years old. He is one of those people who is just, he had he knew he's just a musical genius. He, right, he produced. Right. He just produced, um, co-produced um, Lil Nas X's um, "Industry Baby." Like he is. Yeah. Oh, he is okay. A, he is, wow. He's, and he's got two. He's got two tracks on that on that album. So he is like, like a producer on the rise. But I met him right when I was getting back uh, into to making music again, and we just really hit it off. So he composes wow. he composes the show and does an amazing job. And then, um, yeah, we we are very intentional about the you know the sync the the, the songs that we have in there um to complement the score as well so um it's a it's a wow and also I, you know i got a lot of friends that do music so like one of one of the writers on the show his name is lamar woods he's a producer on the show and he's written on like new girl and a bunch of other shows um he's a dope rapper so i put his song right. in episode 109 <laughs> you know he's got that is homie, amazing he's got, that. he's got a homie named curtis <laughs> joe so i put curtis joe's song at the top of 106 like I got really, really talented friends, and so I made that a point to. That is amazing, about, right? So, that is amazing. Yeah. You're doing the right thing, man. That that that's y'all. I love to see that, man. Love to see that. Yeah. And and and, and, and we we want to thank you again for coming on the show. You know what I mean? For talking to us and for talking to our audience. Absolutely. And c congratulations and much success on on everything you do. And, and uh, do you? And, and we hope to see. A season two because we're gonna be we're gonna be pumping it. Uh, I we, I'm gonna be you. pumping it myself, you know. I appreciate so, you so uh, much. Thank yeah, you very much. yeah, man. We and we and uh, we support we support you. And thanks thank for coming you. on again. It, it, was so, it, it was so great time with y'all. Great to meet y'all. Yeah, thanks, yeah, man. Absolutely. You, you want to just you want to leave off with anything? You say the audience. Uh, thank you so thank you so much for listening to us talk about my new show. I really hope you enjoy it, Grand Crew. Is coming uh, to your television screens again on January fourth at eight thirty p.m. Right before This Is Us, and um, I hope you laugh and I hope you feel the love. We appreciate you, brother. Thanks, Thanks again. so much. Appreciate you too. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, yep. bye now.